Members will have been saddened to learn of the passing of Francie Bradley, a former Assembly member for the constituency of East Londonderry. I commence our business day by recording the passing of our former colleague Francie Bradley. It's more an honour I do than you, almost a horse, the car of Francie Bradley. Guam Kovrom, Okri, Le Clan, Francie, or Awas, or in Shakhtan, Shakhtia. It is my honour to pay tribute to Francie, who passed away just last week. Francie was a member of this Assembly for over six years, being first elected in 2003. Like others, he came to this chamber after another career in public service as a teacher in Dungiven. While I pay tribute to him today from this chair, I had the pleasure of serving on the benches alongside Francie as a friend and a colleague. I am therefore, I believe, well placed to say that Francie may have been too much of a free spirit for the formality of this chamber. Indeed, I first met Francie personally in the confines of Long Case in 1972, a passionate advocate for rights, a great advocate of this love, uh, the language which he loved. He loved his Irish traditional music. He was a poet. He was a songwriter. He loved to sport, particularly the GAA. So it's no surprise, therefore, that when he was a member of the Assembly, he was a very ardent member of the Committee for Culture, Arts and Leisure. It is for those interests which many knew him best, and they are reflected through his entire family circle. On behalf of the Assembly, I express our sympathy to his wife and Fawn Kayla, Anne, his children Joe, Pontius, Conal, Anya, Nullig, and their 13 grandchildren, Suvnus, Siri, or an Anam Ussel. Members, as we have done in the past on these occasions, I will call a representative of each of the parties to speak for up to three minutes to pay tribute to our late friend and colleague. I will allow around 30 minutes for tributes, and if there is enough time remaining after all the parties have spoken, I may be able to call other members who rise in their places to say a few words. The Assembly will now pay its own respects, and I call on Michelle O'Neill. Gourmet, I've got a can call you. Francie Brawley was a huge figure in political life, in the political life of East Derry for many years, and he will be sorely missed by many people. He was a tireless campaigner for civil rights and human rights and a committed Irish Republican. Francie's republicanism was innate. It was in his very being, in his DNA, and it came out in everything that he did. Aware of the injustices in life in the North, Francie, like many others, sought to challenge the status quo. When the civil rights campaign began, Francie got fully behind it as a republican and stood up to fight for rights, equality, and for democracy. His leadership, determination, and commitment shone through and he was a stalwart at marches, demonstrations at that time. His republican activism and his challenging of the injustices that he saw around him led to his internment in Long Cash for a period in the early 1970s. In the dark days of the, of the 1980 and 1981 hunger strikes, Francie was to the fore in supporting the campaigns of the prisoners, raising awareness of the prisoners' demands. As a teacher for many years, he's fondly remembered by the many hundreds of former pupils who recall his enthusiasm and his passion. Indeed, in recent days, many have been paying tribute to him, showing that he will never ever be forgotten. A committed Republican activist all his life, Francie stepped forward and entered the political fray as an elected representative for Sinn Féin. Elected to this assembly back in 2003, he served on the Culture, Arts and Leisure Committee, reflecting another great passion in his life. A fluent Gaelgory, he was steadfast in his promotion of the Irish language, using it in this chamber on many occasions. He established a reputation in the Assembly for his commitment and dedication to his constituents and to his native Dungiven, and also for the respectful way in which he engaged with members from other parties. Across the Assembly, Francie was admired and respected for his beliefs. Aside from politics, Francie also made a huge contribution to the music, music and cultural world with the songs he recorded and performed alongside his beloved wife, Anne. He was well known across Ireland for his songs, and in particular, the H Block song, which has become a classic song the world over and will live on as a testament to his campaigning, his activism and his republicanism. I want to send my condolences to his widow, Anne, to his children, Joe, Prontius, Conal, Anya and Nullig, the entire Brawley family and everyone who knew Francie and my thoughts are with them at this very sad time. Arias J. Goro Anam. I now call Paul Gibbon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to be in this assembly whenever Francie Brawley was an MLA. He left at the start of 2010, and I joined 
uh, later in that year. Um, but I did get to know uh, Francie uh, in, a, in a different sphere. Uh, Francie Brawley, yes, was a committed Republican, um, but he was a committed Republican that held most important to him within the Proclamation of Independence in 1916 when it said cherishing all of the children of the nation equally. And I got to know Francie and his wife Anne through the pro-life movement and certainly his passing is a loss to the voice within the Republican uh, community uh, advocating uh, the rights of the unborn uh, child. And so whenever I was speaking with his wife um, since the, the passing of uh, Francie, uh, Anne was certainly uh, reassuring me that she intends to continue the work of Francie in respect of uh, that issue that is very much important to them. Francie was an unconventional MLA in a different capacity. I worked to the, the then culture minister when he was on the committee, and I can recall that he said to the then minister, I've been handed a list of questions that the folks up in the office want to ask me that's quite awkward. I don't really want to do that. What can I do to be helpful? And uh, so he was a free spirit. I think, Mr. Speaker, as you said, he was unconventional. Uh, and certainly that was something that marked him out at that time uh, when I engaged with uh, the then culture minister, Edwin Putz. So I offer my condolences to Anne Brawley, uh, uh, 51 years of marriage uh, to Francie, to their five children and to their 13 grandchildren. Thank you. And I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On the behalf of the Ulster News Party, we would just like to extend our condolences uh, to the Brawley family, to Anne, children and grandchildren. And it is interesting to hear the unconventional nature of Francie as someone I didn't uh, get the pleasure to get to know and to work with. But on that note, we'll just extend our uh, condolences to the family. Mr. Thank, you. Thank you. And I call John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have been here long enough to have remembered Francie during uh, his years. And let me begin by offering the sympathy of the SDLP and my own personal sympathy to the Brawley family and especially to his wife their children and grandchildren. They were inseparable in life, and the death of Francie is difficult for many people. How much more difficult must it be for the Brawley family? In this assembly, I remember Francie as a gentleman to everyone. And I think I'm correct in saying that he didn't enjoy the adversarial nature of this place. And I know he was glad to return to his native Dungiven to continue the work that he loved, as already mentioned, the Irish language, music, local history, of which the Spearns is rich in. I also acknowledge his strong views on abortion. While he may not have been the most enthusiastic patron of this place, he did make an important contribution to it, and perhaps that was to show respect for others with quite different political views. Fancy also made good speeches. And I would encourage younger members to look them up because they were entertaining, informative, and helped us better understand where Francie stood in relation to party politics as we understand it. He was well above the cut and thrust and point scoring that in the past went on far too often. One speech, if I may mention it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, was on the future of the post office. And the Speaker of the day interrupted Francie a few times to point out that he had yet to mention the post office. On each occasion, Francie reassured the Speaker that he was indeed coming to the post office and continued to deliver one of the finest speeches ever made in this assembly. The last two words spoken were indeed post office. And everyone was happy. The speech was first class, thought-provoking, entertaining, and Francie was not ruled out of order because it didn't focus on the post office but on life. Francie Brawley was indeed a Gael, but his style of Gaelic was all-embracing, bringing people together to agree or disagree, but remaining friends and sharing experiences. He was not a bitter man didn't harbour grudges, and if he couldn't do you a good turn, he most certainly would not have done you a bad turn. His contribution to life in his native Dungiven is huge, and will live on for many years to come. As this new assembly beds down, it would be useful 
to emulate Francie Brawley for his modesty inside and outside this chamber. Let us remember him as a Gael whose example threatened no one and was an important path uh, on the road that I hope we are now all on, respecting and sharing each other's culture and all the things that were important to him and the community he served for many years as a community representative, a councillor, and of course, a member of this assembly. Mr. Speaker, may he rest in peace. Thank you, and I call Trevor Lunn. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise to, to speak about Francie Brawley. He I, uh, overlapped in this place for about three years with him. I think I came here in 2007, and he left in 2010. But I got to know him. Um, he was certainly a very, very committed Republican, but he's also a lover of Irish culture and language, a teacher of Irish, I believe, and an active member of his church in, in Dungiven, where I think he lived most of his life. He's also a composer and a singer, as others have referenced. And whether or not we agree with the songs that he wrote, you still have to admire the skills involved. I mean, not everybody can write a song, and believe me, I've tried. It doesn't, doesn't always work. He was a very humorous man. He's good company and good natured. But the main thing I remember about him was his consistent and passionate promotion of Irish language and Irish medium education. We had a debate here in 2008. I just looked it up the other day. And uh, I'll, I'll read you a few lines of what he said. It was about an Irish medium school proposal in, in Derry. He said that the name of the Irish medium school in question, Gale School in Adderigia, right? charms me greatly. <laughs> he said, indeed, it is so fitting that if I were the Minister of Education, I would approve the school, even if it had no pupils at all. And he went on to explain the mean, meaning of Derigia and the derivation of it, and it's apparently it has to do with the Irish term for a young oak tree. And that, that's fitting for young pupils growing up, the acorn, not the rest of it. It's, um, but that, that was Francie. He, he didn't, he, he was never rude, as far as I could remember, or abrupt with anybody. He had a gentle approach to what he, what he believed in. And uh, I'll leave you one other entry. And Hans started to notice the other day that um, he was called for a question. I think it might have been a supplementary question. And he got up and said, yes, Mr. Speaker, I do want to ask a question. I'm just trying to think of one. <laughs> so, but uh, along with others, I would join in the House in expressing our sympathy to Anne and the wider family circle. He would be greatly missed. Thank you. And I call Kiva Archibald. Thank you, Carla. Um, I'd like to just add a few words to what Michelle has said from a per constituency perspective and add the condolences of our party locally. Fancy was MLA for East Derry from 2003 to 2010 and played an important political role in our local area as a rights campaigner and in many other campaigns locally and made an important contribution for, on behalf of the constituency to this assembly. But he was also a personal friend to many of us and will be greatly missed. He was known for his love of Irish language, culture and music and his legacy in those will be long lasting, not just in Dungiven or County Derry but across Ireland and much further afield. He was a key figure in helping to establish Irish medium schools in Dungiven and the surrounding area and the growth and strength of the Irish language is something that we're all very proud of. So on behalf of our activists across East Derry, I send deepest sympathies to Franz, uh, Francie's wife Anne and to Francie's children and grandchildren in wider family circle. Gurmagut. If there are no other, Martin, call Martina Anderson. Um, Gori Maugut, um, I just would like to recall that on August of this year at the Belfast Fela, Jerry Kelly and I had the privilege of sharing a platform with, with Francie. And whatever one thinks of the songs that he wrote, but he sang so eloquently the Hitch Block song. And I like to stand on behalf of uh, Republicans in Derry to extend our sympathy to Anne and to the wider family. I attended the wake. Um, it was a very big funeral as well. And we know that their hearts are very sore, as are the hearts of the Republican family on the loss. Harry S. J. Guyanandit. There are no other members raising in their places. That concludes the tributes to Mr. Brawley. <laughs>